Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science or Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're gonna talk about tilt shift lens. So let's dive right into it. Now first thing you have to understand why the exactly we need to tilt and shift things. Well, what exactly is the problem? Well, reality is we live in three dimensional world. So if you have ever taken any drawing class, even in basic school things, you must have learned something known as vanishing line. Basically things vanish. So you have a horizon and then you have vanishing line left and right and then you have vanishing line on tops. So you ever take a photograph of a big things, especially like buildings, you will always notice that it's like, a, you know, pointing upwards. It's like it's there is a vanishing point on top. So these lines that's supposed to be parallel, they are not parallel and uh, it creates a very uh, quote unquote walked perspective now it what is the consequence of that? Like, think of this. Let's say you are architecture of this puppy and you showed this to someone and they're like, dude, why the heck you have fewer floors on top? Like, that would be the psychological outcome of that. Even though, like, you can count, hey, it's exactly the same as here, but like, psychology effect, you're not gonna study things. You just want to, you know, uh, things to work properly. So, this sort of photographs, like, again, uh, from cinematic point of view, you may desire this. You may want to, like, oh, this is a big building. You want to show that. But from an architectural point of view, from engineering point of view, or sometimes you just don't like this sort of thing. It's like, dude, my building is straight it should not give the perspective that is like you know Burj Khalifa where it is like you know pointy thing so things look very unnatural especially in nature photography whenever you are talking about tree photography you will always notice tree always looks like dude the trunk is bigger than the whole top part which is fundamentally not true because of the perspective reality so because of the vanishing point on the top layer that creates that issue and things look um, unnatural now you may be like can't we fix it in post processing yes and no yes you can do that but again it's always a fat simile basically it's just a you what you will do is stretch the top part so it creates a image you virtually stretch it and then you crop it in the center part you can understand that that will re uh, reduce your optical quality and uh, unless the Im image is very tack sharp you're gonna have very uh, messy uh, you know messy outcome simply because pixels are just as uh, vector like pixels are just a square you cannot just stretch it so fundamentally it always uh, creates a muddy result you would have noticed that if you take an image scale it up or down everything is awesome the moment you rotate it it's like it starts to become very blurry simply because of that pixels pixels are inherently square in nature or mathematically square in nature so you can't just stretch it's not a vector system so these are serious problems especially for architecture of photography and some other case use case scenario where you do not want something like this so what's the solution well first you start with a lens that has much larger projection area you are talking about tilting and shifting lens these are two axes of movement one is shifting where you are shifting like this second is your tilting so you can understand that inherently that means your sensor is here your lens must project a bit wider area otherwise it will simply not be able to move so uh, for example let's say in a normal full frame lens you would have a projection diameter of 35 millimeter let's just go with that but when you're talking about tilt shift lens systems their projection diameter could be 50 60 or sometimes even 120 so if that will allow them to have a lot of uh, you know range of motion it is required then uh, physically it must physically move because if you are familiar with the old bellow style cameras where cameras where you just have like you know soft squishy thing that was the whole idea with that that you can perfectly align it this is one of those tech that we used to have we no longer have it so in modern systems they do require a very intricate system of slides and a, a locking mechanism to achieve this effect properly and there must be two degrees of freedom that's in the name tilt and shift it must uh, allow you to rotate it and it must allow you to physically shift it now they true uh, all of this technology works on a one principle known as I'm very sorry I can't pronounce it yes Schinkfluff principle uh, I'm very sorry it's like I can't pronunciate it uh, but reality is like somebody during World War One figured out it's like uh, if you want to photograph land very large pieces of land and you want to have multiple cameras like you have to put them in an angle only then you will have like you know 360 camera or pack in that day but issue is if you have it like this you will have only very uh, narrow slice of land that is photographed even in large uh, you know se uh, sensors at, the, at that time in like you know film plates that are one foot across so how the heck you maximize that area so Turns out, whenever you see this sort of drawing, we always assume things are linear. Basically, you have an arrow, uh, arrow here, you have a straight line, you have a lens here, and you have inverted arrow here. That's awesome. That does work. That's real. But somebody figured out, it's like uh, that gentleman whose uh, the pencil is named after, there is a virtual line. Basically, you can take an image plane and create a virtual line. You can take a lens plane, create a virtual line. And you can create a subject plane, you create a virtual line. If all three intersect at one point, you will achieve perfect transposition, meaning you have moved the focal plane itself so whenever i talk about focusing something you will always notice like for example i'm standing here camera can focus something here uh something here but it cannot focus like this focus will always be like parallel like this but the moment i make it like this it cannot focus like. but because you can shift it because you can tilt the lens uh, from that tilt factor you can have the focal plane so instead of like this it can become like this 
that's the amazing part of it so you will have rather than like okay only one thing is in focus you can just rotate it in such a way that everything in this focus but you still have that you know uh, background blur but in this scenario background blur would be diagonal it will like literally look weird it's like why the heck this part is blur this part is blur but this whole thing is not blur this is completely am uh, amazing thing and this cannot be replicated by software the only way where you can even create something like this is like you take a stacking photograph where you have everything in focus because you might be like hey can't i just uh, you know reduce the aperture well uh, if you can reduce the aperture let's say f11 or something like that, the image starts to become blurry it's not a, a basically side effect of a poor lens is a side effect of physics a diffraction will make your image inherently shallow uh, shallow as in so like in terms of quality it inherently loses sharpness so you have to use wide aperture if you use wide aperture you always have the consequence like something is focused something out of focus so you will go to like the best quality let's say if your lens is like f 2.8 to f uh, 11 you will focus on f8 and you'll try to capture as many slices as possible transpose it then do it on a software or you can just buy tilt shift lens or you just tilt it properly and then go home so that's the whole point if the basically subject plane image plane lens plane they align you can have uh, basically twist it however you want for example if you have noticed like uh, in star wars they had that scroll um, you know that text is crawling that was done without cg how the heck you did that how the heck you can have a camera that is focusing tilt you know in a obtuse angle so to say Ta-da! You just had a shifting lens, tilt shift lens that will allow you to achieve that. So you can have like every uh, like you know text here will you can also read text here you can also read. But if you had a lens directly straight, it will be out of focus. So tilt shift lens are the exact lens system, and this is one of those things that you have to understand. These things are expensive. Now they are not expensive because they inherently have something magical. Heck, most of them are just a repurposed. Uh, fundamentally speaking medium format lens system so they just go to lens manufacturer basically exact lens element manufacturer they're like dude how exactly you have made a medium format just copy paste that because you have to understand medium format always had this technology especially in the bellow design camera modern ones don't have that but back in the days this was a very common function so it is very expensive because it's a, not a general use item it's not like you know common wide uh, angle lens system and all that just so it's very expensive and uh, if you buy a very cheap one the cheapest one you can buy you will only find tilt and shift now you may be like isn't that enough well yes and no uh, because you have to understand tilt and shift happens in axis tilt shift that's awesome but when you are rotating it how the heck you want to rotate you want to rotate it like this or you want to rotate it like this for that now again if you buy something very cheap that does not have that rotational axis no problem you can just rotate the camera but then again you have to either crop in to preserve the aspect ratio or you have to just live with it so again that's up to you if you are uh, dealing with a limited budget that's acceptable but if you have the money people especially who do it professionally they will always buy something that has rotational freedom so you can rotate the you know shifting mechanism to however you see fit this was not pre present in the old uh, cameras uh, old canon lenses newer ones they have that because photographers like asked about this it's like can you please provide us that option so we can rotate it however we see fit so if you have a like you know bridge let's say brooklyn bridge you can be just like hey i need to shift it i don't need to shift from you know like this i need to shift like the bridge is like this so i want to shift it according to this you can do that so that's why uh, rotation is also desirable in high-end lenses now canon is really good in this department because uh, canon has never abandoned these sort of lenses and they have always kept uh, updating this series this is one of the things like sony sucks and nikon sucks and everybody else uh, fuji has announced uh, they are also releasing something like this but you get the point this is one of the things that uh, canon is tangibly ahead like uh, whenever i'm talking about sony it's like you know you have to buy samyang or veltrox or something like that it's like uh, they don't have first party option not yet anyway i do expect them to release it because this is kind of amazing lens especially uh, if you want to do macro photography you know for a fact that you have to take uh, macro photos and then you have to stitch them by this lens align the focal plane done go home sweet dreams so what are the uses of that first use is architecture you never want to sell any architecture or photograph that you know have that taper effect you always want that has only two vanishing point you never want image that has three vanishing point left right and top you never want that you always are left and right so the pr perspective the lines remain parallel that's why architecture photography love this then we have panorama because the lens is projecting such a large uh, field of view you can either lock the lens itself and move the camera uh, using the shift mechanism and you will get perfect panorama and you're like do we need that well think of this way let's say you are scanning a document let's say an art photograph and you want to do a very good job of it like really the best possible this would be the easiest way of achieving that uh, again and if you are taking like let's say wide angle it's most of the tilt shift are wide angle you can literally uh, zoom in as much as you can and then you just scan it and you can achieve things that is like literally mind-bogglingly sharp 
So panorama wise, this is amazing. Now be mindful, this panorama is a flat panorama. Basically, this allows you to make large panoramas, not circular panorama. If you want to make 360, this is not the lens you want. But if you want to make flat panoramas, basically like I want to stitch this images to make a huge image that's desirable with, uh, doable with this shift system. Then you have macro shots. Now macro shots because to be like, for example, let's say you want to shot like this, you will have an issue. It's like either this is in focus or this is in focus or that is in focus. Or you can have like multiple, uh, you know, in focus shot and you attach the slice very expensive very time consuming or you just have a tilt shift lens tilt the focal plane like this and done go home and it cannot be replicated by any software to this degree no matter what you do like you can go yolo on it but good luck with that all you will be doing is wasting time then we have very the most popular effect miniature effect now be mindful miniature effect because of the desire uh, you know the demand for it people have created amazing plugins that and most of the plugins do a very good job but be mindful that does take on like let's say you're doing a tv show for netflix or something like that uh, for example uh, sherlock holmes they have a very amazing miniature scene you can you do that in post-production yes you can do that in post production. but if you have an actual lens the effect is far easier on you and specifically on your budget post-processing is not free it takes time especially if you are rendering something in let's say 4k and like you know proper high quality tv quality it's expensive forget about movie quality movie quality will literally take days to render so you will be like hey just you know do color correction editing and all this but don't try like achieve as many effects as you can utilizing uh, physical things rather than faking things so this is amazing uh, when you talk about miniature effect and then people have used amazing things when you are talking about creative for example one of this technology is that you can have a mirror especially if it's a slim mirror this is amazing you have a mirror you have a person you have a camera on the side and camera is directly focusing in the mirror and there is nothing for like you know to uh, you know uh, paint it out the camera will not be seen in the uh, basically mirror it's kind of amazing it's like you can have a mirror looking directly into it no cross processing no cgi nothing it's just like ta da it's kind of amazing so it it has amazing uses if you know uh, what you can do with it so this was my presentation about tilt shift lens hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please give the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching